Hello! So, the Embraer EMB110 or Banderanti has been updated in Microsoft Flight Simulator, so I thought we might go and take it for a flight. So, we're not going to go into exhaustive depth looking at the changes, we're just going to see how the plane goes and take it for this short flight. If we go and have a look at Little Nav Map, we're at Oldbury, which is on the border of New South Wales and Victoria in the south of Australia, and we're going to fly down to Mount Beauty. So it should be an interesting trip. It's only 40 miles, so it won't take too long. It's just really a, a shakedown to try the aeroplane out and see if the checklist that I wrote originally still works with the aeroplane. So let's go and jump inside and have a look around. So it's got a really nice tablet. I think this has been updated since I last looked at it, to be honest. So if we go and click the button at the top of the tablet, you get this ramp manager, which has got obviously all the switches for the doors and the chocks and the covers and things like that. So let's go and try that out. So if we close the front door and the cargo and the traffic, get rid of the traffic cones, get rid of the chocks and the engine covers and the pitot tube covers and the tail rod. The tail rod is like a balance beam underneath the tail that stops it tipping up when it's being loaded. And what else do we get in here just out of interest? So there's lots of options for avionics options. And you also get some device and UI and behavior options. So you can do things like changing the interface of the tablet. That's quite good, isn't it? Um, OK, so beyond that, we're not going to focus too much on that. We want to work through our checklist, don't we? So let's just have a quick look outside. So you can see the airplane's been cleaned up now. The chocks are out of the way. We don't need to push back today, we can just taxi directly forward straight out onto the taxiway. OK, let's get things sorted out then. So, Control 6 should take us overhead, yes it still does. And we can set the power to external power and the light comes on, which is good. We can then press Control and 3, which brings us into the cockpit. You can see as soon as we have power, the GPS's have lit up and we should be able to put the transponder onto standby which is working nicely so back overhead we can go and put the no smoking and seatbelt signs on they all, all everything has nice sounds in this it's really quite nice okay it's not the highest fidelity graphics but it, it's all functional so nav lights go to on and the anti-collision lights go to on so on the AC bus bar we're going to go and turn the inverters to on now. And then on the instrument panel, control and three. We're going to go to the avionics stack and program our flight into the GPS. So we're taking off from Oldbury, which is YMAY. So set origin to YMAY and press enter. And in its own time, it comes up. And then we're going to go and program Mount Beauty, YMBT. OK, so YMBT. And there we go, Mount Beauty, enter, and it appears. Hopefully, there we go. So we can come straight back out. We're just doing the most simple of flight plans. And look at the map. And we can, we've got the magenta line, which is good. And we can zoom out a little bit so we can see some more of our route. And we're looking good. OK, so what do we do next? We press F to come back to the pilot's position and we're going to look over and we're going to set the flaps for takeoff. So you can see the flap lever moving over there. We're going to put them on the middle position. We're going to go and set the barometric pressure. So I'm going to press B to shortcut doing that and it will set the local barometric pressure which obviously affects the, the reported altitude. So control 3. We're going to go and put the pumps on for the left and the right engines. We don't need the auxiliary pumps. So then we're going to go through the engine start sequence. So how do we do this? We go control six. We turn the inertial separators on, which stops rubbish being sucked into the engines. And we go to left ignition on, which is over here, and then left starter on. And you can hear that happening. If we look down in the cockpit, we're needing to monitor the NH gauge for the left engine and the needle will start moving around in a moment. When it gets to 10%, we can advance the 
fuel for the left engine. So the fuel lever goes all the way forwards. So it's getting to 10, there it goes. So we advance that forwards and the fuel will be injected in, the aeroplane or the engine increases in speed. And when it stabilizes, I think when it's when you hear the sound change basically. But yeah, when when the needles have stopped moving around, you can go back overhead and you can turn off the ignition. Notice the start switch is back in the middle on its own. And now we can do the same for the right engine. So ignition on, start the engine, come back down, monitor the NH gauge. And there it goes. And when it gets to 10%, we can advance the fuel lever for the, the right engine. So, so far, the checklist is checking out. <laughs> there we go. So again, we just hang on for a moment, wait for the engine to come up to speed. Okay, that's looking good. So, control six takes us back overhead. We can turn off the ignition. I'm just reading through the checklist to, to catch up with where we are supposed to be. So we can now turn the generators on for left and right engines. We can turn the battery master switch to BAT at this point because we effectively have internal generation of power. So we don't need external power anymore. So then to prepare for taxi, overhead still we go and turn the taxi lights to on. Back in the cockpit, we set the heading bug to the wrong way direction. So there is actually a green marker here that is the wrong way direction. So there we go. Um, set transponder to on. So we saw that over here. So we're going to turn that on now. Parking brakes can come off, but I'm going to wait with them for a moment actually. So we need to go back overhead and. That should be on, not rotating. <laughs> I'm just reading around. So yes, static pitot heat goes on, passenger heat goes on, landing lights can go on, and we can go out to the runway. So we'll come off the parking brake, and you can see the airplane is rolling immediately. So we don't need to push the RPM levers forwards. We're on minimum RPM at the moment it's quite happily rolling along even on idle. So if we sit up slightly we can go and go the long way round to the runway. Rather than backtracking on the runway we should be able to go down and cut across onto the runway. Well that's the plan at least. Should we have a look from outside? So there's this phasing sound for the engines which a lot of people hate but then I hardly ever spend any time outside the aeroplane so it doesn't really affect me. So yeah, we're just going to cut down to the taxiway. We'll just slice that van in half along the way. So, so far, everything we knew in the past about this aeroplane still holds true, which is really great. So we shouldn't need a very long takeoff roll, so I'm going to pull straight onto the runway here and do an intersection takeoff with it. Of course, this is famous last words. We're going to end up putting this in the trees, aren't we? You can see it coming. Just straighten ourselves up. Right, back on the parking brake just for a moment. So now we're on the runway. We can set the propeller RPMs to max set the auto feather. So auto feather is here. And we're going to make sure, I'm just going to move the yoke out of the way a moment. How do we get rid of the yoke in this thing? Oh, there's that button there, isn't it? Yeah, there's a propeller sink. You shouldn't use propeller sink on takeoff and landing, but you should use auto feather on takeoff and landing. Okay, so that's that done. 
so off the parking brake. So I'm not using head tracking quite purposely, so we're going to go and put the weather radar on as well. Not that there's any weather to see today, you can see it's a lovely day. So we're just monitoring the indicated airspeed now. Okay, so rotate, and we're immediately in the air. So gear up. We can pull the throttles back a little bit. Should we try and turn on the head tracking so you get to see some of this lovely scenery around here? So this is Albury. So let's just do a circuit while we're just clearing out, doing the final few things. Okay, so I'm going to turn the head tracking off for a moment because I need to look down at my list. So we're needing to basically clean the plane up in terms of the engines. So we're going to put the RPM out to... 90, which is good. You notice the torque is, is good, so we're looking at 90% there on the RPM. That's perfectly fine. Okay. Auto feather can go to off, so we come down here, turn auto feather off, and we can now turn the propeller sink on. And back overhead if we press control 6 we can go and turn off the inertial separators now we're off of the ground yeah if you're doing commercial flight you would have your landing lights on the whole time if you're not we're not going to bother we're going to turn them off okay so let's go back and turn the head tracking back on and we can see there's Albury Airport it's really lovely scenery around here isn't it look at the mist rolling in this morning in Australia. It's very, very cool. Okay, so we want to straighten up now and get onto the course that we are looking to follow, which is more or less that direction, and then we'll have a play with the autopilot in a moment. So I'm going to turn the head tracking off for a moment just so we can play with this without any problems. So 150 degrees. Let's just trim the elevators out now to keep the aeroplane going in a similar climb profile than we really want. So we're just coming up to 3,000 feet there. So if we climb out to 5,000 perhaps so what we'll do, we'll go and switch on the autopilot and we'll put it into heading mode and we'll set 5,000 feet and arm it and then we can pull this and set the climb rate to get there. So we should find now, look, the aircraft's going for 1,000 feet a minute, it's holding the heading and it's climbing out to 5,000 feet at 1,000 feet a minute. So we can keep an eye now on the engine gauges and see what's going on. So you can see the RPM is incredibly high actually. So let's go and have a look and see what we can do about bringing that down a bit. So we're going to pull the RPM gauges here down to 90%. But we can, we've got lots of room on the torque to push it up to about 16-ish, 16, 16 to 17. You just need to be mindful of the uh, the temperatures. So if you keep an eye on this, if we were to slam the throttles all the way forwards, watch the temperatures climb. And they will carry on climbing. They'll only climb slowly, but they will carry on. So we don't run the engines beyond the end of the torque gauge, basically. Keep it within limits. So it, We'll leave it just below 18, that'll be fine. Okay, so our aeroplane is going to fly up this valley, and at the other end of the valley we will find... You can see here's our aeroplane tracking the valley. Let's zoom out. At 
the other end of the valley you will find our destination for today. Very cool. Okay, so this has two units in it, which is quite interesting, but it does mean you can do things like um, pulling up the, the flight plan information in one screen and the, um, the map on the other. I really like this aeroplane. I always, I always have liked it. So you'll notice the, the ramp manager, once you've obviously taken off, shows a warning because you're not at the ramp anymore, so there's no point having it here. Yeah, does that make sense? So it says, invalid state detected. And you can't... Oh, you can close it. It was just a bit fiddly. Um, okay. So you can see there's a screen here that shows the state of the autopilot. It's a bit awkward in that the heading bug and the, the course controls are here, whereas the autopilot and all the switches for it are down on the central console. But it's got lights on it, so that does help quite a lot with that. And the, the pre-selector works really nicely. It's, you know, it's nice and straightforward to use. Okay, so we're at 5,000 feet and cruising along quite nicely at about 205 knots, I guess. This thing maxes out at about 225, I think. So if you absolutely, you know, push it against the stops, it can do about 10 knots faster than we're going, but it won't go, or 15 knots, but it won't go that much faster. So we're actually doing really nicely here to go this sort of speed. So if we go and have a look up over the nose, can we see the valley? So you'll notice, like I said, the, the texture quality isn't great. But I don't think it matters too much because there's just so much to do in this aeroplane. It's, it's actually just good fun. This scenery around here is fantastic on a morning, isn't it? We go outside and just trying to figure out the head tracking to make myself go further this way. That will do. <laughs> I'll help myself with the cursor keys. So you can see the engine out there. It's quite a nice animation there. Okay, so how are we doing on our route? Can we get the... We've got the track up at the top corner. I actually like to change these, so what we could do is go to menu go to change fields so instead of that we would like estimated time to waypoint yeah and then we can go back and then we get how many minutes in cruise until we get there so the um the GNS 530 and 430 and the PMS GTN 750, they're very, very configurable. So you can kind of tailor them to your requirements a lot of the time. Okay, how are we doing against the trek? So at the moment we were just following a heading which happens to correspond with being close to the trek. If we really want to, we can come down here. Well, we need to double check what mode are we in. So we are in uh, localizer mode at the moment. So we'll change the CDI. To GPS and now we can go and press the nav button and the aeroplane will gently track over you can see it's slightly to the right of the line at the moment so it's going to gently track left and get exactly onto the line you can see that illustrated in little nav map actually so yeah it's put itself on a very shallow intercept course and now it's going to turn right so you can see it's doing that right now it's rolling over coming back onto the trek. So if we zoom out and have a look, shall we start descending? So let's begin doing this by turning the head tracking off for a moment. So I can do this and talk about it and not have to wrestle around too much. So we're going to drop down to Let's find out to begin with what altitude Mount Beatty is at. So we need to go and turn off the 
this option, otherwise I can't click on things on the map. And the altitude of the airfield is... Uh, 1,100 feet. So we want to go for... Let's go for 3,000 feet. Yep. And we'll do it. We'll arm it. And we'll do it at... 1,000 feet a minute. So you'll notice we're getting really close to overspeeding the airframe, so we're going to pull the throttles back. To stop it from accelerating completely out of control, so you can see the indicated airspeeds coming back down, which is good. So when we get a bit closer to the airfield, we'll orbit overhead and decide how we're going to approach if we have a look on the map. What wind do we have at Mount Beauty? We've got 10 degrees, 9 knots. So we're looking at coming in runway 3-2 two, then. So that's going to be an interesting one. We're going to have to skirt the hill and turn in quite sharply then over the top of the town. Over the big hill mountain bike park, apparently. <laughs> so you can see, there's the hill we're going to have to go along the edge of. It's going to be an interesting one. So we're just descending down. Got plenty of time. We are seven miles out and counting. So we've got the same reading showing here almost and the estimated time on route. tracking back on. Just recentering it. There we go. So we can go and be nosy now and look out the window. It's very nice around here, isn't it? Side the aeroplane. It's a bit diffi more difficult to lean across that side. But anyway. detail around this area is really, really good. Really impressed. Okay, so I'm going to come off the autopilot. You can see there's the airstrip. So we're going to loop around left. We will zoom in on this a few times so we can see the local area. So I'm just losing some speed. Okay, so wheels can come down already. We need to put the inertial separators back on and the landing lights. Flaps. Steep approach, isn't it? I'm trying to avoid the hillside and 
this little town. How are we doing for airspeed? Oh, we're good. Avoid the fence. Bit of a bounce, but nothing too bad. Very cool. This does have reverse pitch on the propellers, so I just didn't need it. Look. So we will roll along though to go and see if there's a turning spot at the other end of the runway. So we need to turn off the... I'm just going to slow ourselves down a little bit before I crane my neck around. Try and turn the landing light back off. Do we have a turning spot? This is going to be tight, isn't it? Should we do this from outside? Just. Very cool. So now we're back on the ground. We can pull the propeller RPM back. And roll back in. Just before we get back into the, the main part of the area, we can go and put the collision light back to rotating. Go and turn the transponder back to standby, I guess. The trouble is, if I look down, I can't see what I'm doing here, so I'm going to stop the airplane for a moment. There we go. Go and find some parking. Right around here, isn't it? We're going to park in between the sheds down there, shall we? Not sure we really fit, but we'll make ourselves fit. Try not to get too muddy. Do we even fit on the taxiway? Barely. Okay, so all we have to do to cut the engines back is pull the mixtures back. Obviously we're going to lose power slowly so alarms will probably start going off as soon as the, the generators obviously aren't going to be generating anything anymore. So yeah. <laughs> Go and turn those off. Go and turn off all the switches, seat belts, no smoking signs, the nav lights can come off, the anti collision lights can come off, the taxi lights can come off, uh, the inverters can be switched off now, the inertial separators can be switched off, 
and we're pretty much almost cold and dark we're just running on battery now so all that's going to be supplying power to is some of the avionics kit so we will go and put ourselves to off and it will go cold and dark obviously in the tablet we should be able to go back into the ramp manager yes it's ready to use so we can open all the doors back up we can put the traffic cones out we can put the wheel chocks back in place we can we'll leave the covers off for the moment and we're just going to have a look outside so there we go it's pretty much as i remember it and it's really it's still great fun to fly and it's very predictable it's very docile to control and the checklist still works <laughs> The one thing I think we forgot actually did I did I remember so I didn't turn oh yeah I did turn the auto feathering off and I oh no I didn't I should have um that's interesting that still had power so there's some things that don't quite make sense around the cockpit so I hadn't turned on auto feathering for approach I should have done um but that's just me not following my own written instructions um but yeah, the, the Bandarante is great fun. And you can see this part of the world in Australia is really, really beautiful, especially early in the morning. So I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you enjoyed that. That was the Embraer EMB110 Bandarante from Next Gen Simulations from Microsoft Flight Simulator. See you again soon. <laughs>